Jackson's favorite color is red. Uh, and, uh, and my favorite color is red too. I'm Matt. And I'm Kate. And Jackson was our dog. We lost Jackson nine days ago, so it's been pretty recent. We did not lose him to cancer. He was diagnosed with cancer 26 months ago. Really, like the best two years of his life were with cancer. I will be honest in that he was a difficult puppy. He liked to eat everything. He ate furniture, remote controls, cell phones, money out of your wallet, seat belts, anything he could get his mouth on. Did he, he eat a Coke can? He did, yeah. he did. Somebody else was watching him at the time and had left him alone in the car with a Coke can and came back and there was no Coke can and just a Jackson. So he was good at chewing things up, but he was definitely mischievous. Jackson's quality of life was great. Jackson was Jackson. He loved to chase a ball. He loved to go swimming. He loved to be with you just hanging out. You know, he, he just was a dog that just liked being present. Jackson started to have some mobility issues with his back legs and they were just a little bit wobbly and some people had suggested maybe he had arthritis. And I made an appointment with his regular vet, Dr. Siobhan Cantrell and took him in to see what was going on with his back legs. She did x-rays and found that he had a partially torn ACL in both his left leg and his right leg. And their practice in doing x-rays is that they do a rectal exam before the x-rays. And when she did the rectal exam, she felt a very small bump or lump on his anal gland. So Dr. Cantrell had called me that evening and said, you know, bad news, I found a lump. And based on the lump, it does seem like it's something we need to check out. And right away, she referred me to Dr. Chelsea Tripp at Animal Medical Center. Jackson was initially diagnosed with a tumor in his anal sac. So he was taken in for evaluation to his regular veterinarian. Uh, they palpated a mass effect for him uh, in the region of his anal sac and ultimately uh, referred him for further diagnostics. He came to us uh, and needed what we call staging, where we have to understand has the cancer spread at the time uh, of diagnosis. We performed an ultrasound for him of his abdomen and found that he had more multiple lymph nodes in the region uh, that drains the back end of the dog called the sublumbar lymph nodes. And so he had a primary anal sac tumor as well as this spread of lymph nodes into his abdomen. It looked grim. It was a type of cancer that was difficult to treat, that dogs didn't generally have good survival rates with any kind of treatment. And, you know, it was it was pretty discouraging right off the bat. Meeting with Dr. Tripp really changed that for me from the get-go and through his entire treatment, she was always very optimistic. She always had a plan and a backup plan and a backup plan to that. He needed surgery to have the primary tumor removed from his perineum, and then we had to go into the abdomen and actually take out the lymph nodes as well. So he had a two-surgical approach. Unfortunately, there was a lymph node that was really far back and difficult for us to get out. It was actually inside the pelvis, kind of in that one spot between the two approaches where you can't reach it. So after surgery, we elected to treat him with some chemotherapy. And given that the chemotherapy has not been well worked out for this disease, a recent abstract was presented at our national conference that suggested that Palladia, a new drug that's come out on the market by Zoetis, actually has efficacy against anal sac adenocarcinoma and gross disease patients as well as patients that have had surgery. So we talked about it and decided to go forward with Palladia for Jackson. He handled it really well. He was able to have the drug with really no concerns. He completed about a six month trial uh, of trying to maintain. We actually caused shrinkage of the lymph node that was present uh, within his pelvis and maintained good control of his primary tumor site as well as the other lymphatics in the region. He had a good quality of life with no concerns. I would say the last two years of Jackson's life were the best. You, you start looking around and you're like, this dog doesn't behave like he's sick at all. He has no side effects from the chemo. He's completely over surgery. Like he's, he's just Jackson. You know, through all of this, he was 10 years old, 11 years old. So he wasn't necessarily the most active, energetic puppy, 
but like he behaved like a 10 or 11 year old dog and not like a sick dog in any way that you could point at. I feel so good about the treatments that we did for Jackson. I mean, Jackson had a team and they took very good care of him and everything was worth having that extra time with Jackson. Jackson was a really special guy. I think he's the poster child of handling chemotherapy. And people are scared about giving chemotherapy to their dogs. They say, wow, I've seen what my mom went through, or I've seen what my sister has gone through. In dogs and cats, we really try to maintain their quality of life as best as possible. And I actually challenge many of my clients to go out in the lobby and, and pick out the dogs that are on chemotherapy because I don't think you can tell. They really have very good quality of life and we want them to have as many good days as possible. And Jackson did. What could Jackson tell to other pet owners? It's, hey, yeah, so, okay, so your dog was just diagnosed with cancer. Doesn't mean your dog doesn't have good years, plural, left in him or in her. It doesn't mean that we're done here. There's a tremendous optimism there. I found it really important to share Jackson's story with people and to share that there's hope and to share that there's options and to share that chemotherapy can be a really pretty amazing thing. It's important for us to tell Jackson's story because he is and always will be a survivor to us.